our soul knows more about our future life direction than we can process on a, at a conscious level. And when you follow that heart, call it instinct, God, call it your gut, call it your hunch, you often end up exactly where you need to be. There are two types of wanting in the life. Now, the philosopher Michael Beckwith, and if you don't know Michael Beckwith, he is a, a philosopher, preacher at the Agape Spiritual Center in Los Angeles. But there's something I learned from him, and it's called mature wanting versus immature wanting. So immature wanting is the wanting that comes from the, the influx of information from media, television, politicians, your parents, your the education system. Basically, a society designed to track its efficacy and the quality of how it functions through this arbitrary thing called GDP. So we're told that we need clothing. We need this, 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 this new clothing. Now, obviously, I'm not suggesting you walk around naked, but consider this fact, right? In the 1980s, the average American would buy 12 new articles of clothing a year. Right now, it's 62. And so we are buying more stuff than we could ever use, than we need. I mean, how did we come up with this crazy idea of a garage and two cars? If you go to Europe, I live in Europe now. I moved to Europe. Um, I have a choice. I could live in America. I have residency there. I have residency in Europe. In Europe, I have two bicycles. There's no reason for a freaking car because I love the cobblestone streets and the walking cities I'm in. But this idea, this bull idea perpetrated by the root cause, I guess, is GDP means we are possessed by immature wanting. And we spend money for the dopamine rush very often on things we don't need. Now, this is not just articles of clothing or fancy cars or gigantic houses. It's also ideas such as you need to be in a relationship. You are not a true man unless you get married and have 2.5 kids and a house with a garage. You need a college degree or you're a failure at life. And so this immature wanting pulls us in different directions. But it rarely speaks to our soul. Now, what is the opposite? What is mature wanting? Mature wanting is when you can tap into what your soul truly desires. When I was working at Microsoft, I realized I hated my job. And you know why I took that job and why I spent four years as a computer engineer? Because I developed an immature desire from the advice of my grandfather. My grandfather um, had grown up in India. And in the 1990s, Bill Gates visited India and this was a big deal for India. It was a massive deal. It was all over the news. Now, my grandfather at that point was living in Malaysia, but he I remember being in a car with him and he said, Vision, you must be like Bill Gates, richest man in the world. You must go into computers. And so I got into Georgetown University, which was my dream university, but they didn't have a computer science program. So I decided to unenroll from Georgetown and enroll in Michigan, not realizing how freaking cold it gets. And <laughs> I live a few hours from there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and enrolled in computer engineering. And I hate it. I hate it the four years. I just, I was not good at it. I didn't enjoy it. You know what I really wanted to do? Performing arts. But my grandfather, whom I really respected, said, acting is for losers. Never be an actor. Actors, he, he had all of these, these, these theories. And I, and I love the man. He's no longer alive. But the influence from past generations gave me this immature wanting. So I end up going to Michigan. I get that job at Microsoft, I literally get invited to a party at Bill Gates' home. And there I am shaking hands with the hold on, Bill Hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm sorry. How did that happen? <laughs> so back then in 1998, Bill Gates actually invited all the, the new interns who got jobs at Microsoft to his home for a barbecue. And he would flip burgers for us and make really? us, yeah, his beautiful house in Lake Washington. And, um, and one week later I quit because I realized I did not want to be like Bill Gates. I did not want to be in freaking computer engineering. I actually wanted to be doing something completely different. So you know what I did? I became a broke actor. I signed up and joined some theater troops. Then I moved to New York. I started working for an NGO that focused on world peace. I was broke. I was earning 25 grand a year in New York, living a, a shitty life for one year. But in that one year, I met the woman I would later marry and have two kids with. I came up with the business idea that today led to Mind Valley. I met friends of mine who had an incredible impact on my life. I met the co-founder of the company I would later start, all in that one year, being broke ass in New York, but following my heart. You see, when you follow your heart, 
mature wanting. Sometimes I believe our soul knows more about our future life direction than we can process on a, at a conscious level. And when you follow that heart, call it instinct, God, call it your gut, call it your hunch, you often end up exactly where you need to be for your fulfillment and your happiness. Maybe this is why Steve Jobs, okay, look at Steve Jobs as an example. For everybody who says, oh, oh, immature wanting is for losers. You're never gonna be rich and successful. Well, look at Steve Jobs. The guy fricking moved to India to bounce from ashram to ashram meditating. He went and lived on what? An apple farm. He became a hippie for a while. He dropped out of Reed College to learn calligraphy because he really wanted to learn calligraphy and not you know, what his parents wanted him to learn. But all of that came together. All of these became breadcrumbs that led to his destiny. Mature wanting is the breadcrumbs that lead you to your destiny. Steve followed his heart, studied calligraphy. He followed his heart. He went to India. All of this came together and helped him start the company that became Apple. And in his Stanford commencement address in 2005, he said this, always follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know who you are to become. And he also said, drown out the voices that pulled you away from this. So this was a really important lesson. And this is what I wanted to articulate. You must understand the difference between mature wanting and immature wanting. Drown out the voices that are telling you that you need that particular car or you need to be, you need to be following this particular pattern of building a family that maybe your mom or your dad did and try to fully listen to your spirit, your soul, and understand what it is that you truly desire to be at your core level. If you're digging the conversation I'm having with Vishen Lakiani from Mind Valley, you've got to hear the whole talk. We break down why hard work isn't enough, why he walked away from a multi million dollar VC backed company, and how really the seed for everything great in his life was planted by just chasing down his passions. Check out the whole talk.